Right. Now, uh, joining me now is Gil Elizov, who has spent around 15 years with Gillette and, and 20 years in total in the satellite communications industry, um, primarily in product management, system architecture, and he's also um, a subject matter expert in in-flight connectivity. Uh, he is currently head of products, leading a team responsible for maintaining and enhancing Gillette's platform and transforming customers' needs, requirements, and ideas into reality. Now, just for the record, Gilat uh, Satellite Networks is a leading uh, global provider of satellite-based broadband communications more recently uh, with their Sky Edge platform, which is aligned with uh, next generation satellite technology, including non-geostationary orbit uh, satellites, NGSO uh, constellations, and very high throughput satellites, uh, VHTS, in geosynchronous Earth orbit, uh, which enable ubiquitous connectivity for fixed and uh, mobility sites anywhere, uh, land, sea, and there, uh, and will extend 5G networks and mobile edge computing to serve remote sites and enable mass market growth to connect IoT devices everywhere. So welcome, Gil. Thanks for joining us. Um, let me start by asking, the satellite uh, communication industry is going through huge transformation at, at this moment. It has been for some time, um, and this seems to be accelerating as we go forward. What is the part of 5G in, in, that, uh, in that change? So first of all, Paul, thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to, to talk with you again and to be on this platform again. Um, <laughs> 5G, 5G is, is a revolution happening in, in the communication industry and satellite as being part of the communication industry uh, is taking part of that, uh, taking part of that in several ways and we will discuss that in, in the coming minutes, but it's taking first of all part of it in terms of the technology. 5G brings higher speeds, software defined networks, software defined radio, moving to the cloud, wide variety of application, and this is exactly what is the transformation that's going on through the satellite industry those days. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's on Leo, Meo, Geo, uh, all, all of those orbit, all of those satellites, all of those constellations brings the same kind of revolution into the satellite industry of software defined, software defined satellites, software defined radio, software defined uh, hubs and modems. And there is a variety and a lot of committees walking around the satellite industry about those changes of software define, uh, for example, taking a change and trying to define how it should be a digital interface between the hub and the modems, between the hubs and the uh, transceivers, back HPAs. Uh, so this is something that is going through the industry, moving into a software defined radio and having a standardized interface there. Moving into the cloud, having the basic things as management, but also data centers, and we are starting to see also discussions around moving the um, baseband, the part of the receive and transmit into the cloud, which is also technology environment that comes from the 5G, from the open run, from the uh, environment that tries to make everything something that can be run over a cloud in order to be used in that. Uh, moving into standardization of interfaces, we are starting to see a lot more discussion in the satellite industry regarding using MEF, using ONAP, using other kind of interfaces that come from the 3GPP and the 5G world into the satellite, into the infrastructure, into the networks, in order to make sure that the satellite industry can be part of any communication uh, network that includes also 5G. I think the, the end game from a, lot, from a lot of players around there is that if I can use the same management system, the same interfaces, the same infrastructures for cloud, for uh, operation of satellite and 5G cellular networks, this is the advantage that everybody is looking for, the operators, the vendors. And I think this is where the satellite industry is moving into. So there's a lot of impact in that area from the 5G into the satellite networks. Uh, we launched earlier this year, Gilat launched the Skyge 4, and Skyge 4 stands exactly on those lines, the lines of software defined, the line of cloud. Cloud is, doesn't necessarily mean going over um, Azure or, or Amazon AWS or those kind of cloud. It can even be a private cloud that some of the operators are starting to build up for themselves 
either for managing MNOs or managing 5G, but also for managing satellites. Mm -hmm. So having a solution that can run over those kind of infrastructure is exactly what the market is looking for. And Sky4 is aiming exactly on those paths. Okay, interesting. I, I think the thing that differentiates 5G, I mean, if, if you look at it, um, you have the usual kind of cellular network upgrades with, five, you know, faster up, uplinks and all, all of these things that you would expect anyway. But I think the thing that differentiate, uh, differentiates it is that it's a new kind of network um, that connects things and objects, not just communications devices, as it were. So it's, you know, very, very exciting. Um, what will the role of 5G non-terrestrial networks in satellite uh, be in satellite communications in, in the near future, do you think? So this, it's exactly where you started from. What you said about 5G is not just about speeds, it's about connecting everything to everything. And mm -hmm. when you look on 5G NTN, first of all, the fact that organizations like the 3GPP and a lot of big companies that are part of it, looking about having 5G not just for cellular, but also for non-terrestrial networks, which satellite is part of that, is a major change in the satellite industry. For years, they were trying to, we were trying to do standardization of the satellite world, and we didn't succeed in that. At the end of the day, every company is having a unique access, a unique platform. Having something like 3GPP, trying to define a 5G NTN solution where you can access either directly from your cell phone through the satellite and do your phone calls or do a low bitrate application and all the way to IoT and other kind of solution means that satellite will expand to other areas that today is not there. Other areas like IoT, like as I said, emergency phone calls, things that today we are not really think about satellite as a real solution, either it's too expensive or too complicated. Mm -hmm. But having 5G NTN, and on the short term, this is exactly what we are seeing. Low bitrate application, voice application, be able to work over LEO satellites will mean that satellite can reach other places. We mean that they can be other applications that are being used. And as we know, it doesn't end there. Once you can do more application, more kind of solution, it will expand. I don't think it will stay only on LEO. You won't be able to do 5G NTN over GEO, at least not in the coming two, three years. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you are opening satellite to IoT will mean that in some places, having kind of aggregation solution, kind of a mixed solution, where the VSAT is working on GEO, but providing other services as well as IoT and voice, sometimes in LEO, sometimes in a multi-orbit environment, it will be a major improvement. Having the 5G NTN defining those kind of standards that later on can be used also in other type of networks will open the satellite to more technology, to more user. And at the end of the day, it means reducing the cost, cost of bandwidth, cost of use of satellite. Yeah. And I mean, IoT is going to generate unprecedented data volumes. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a role for satellite in coping. I mean, the, these cellular net networks, even 5G networks, are going to be absolutely bursting at the seams. And I'm just wondering if satellite can, can take on some of that burden. Oh, of course, of course. I, I think the, the, the place, as I said, I think the place for technology like satellite, like Geo satellite, I even will go directly to Geo satellite. There's still room for that because once you have a lot of application with different needs, with different demand, with different rates, now there is come to the difference between having a low bitrate solution of IoT that can work directly over satellite mm -hmm. to where you need to connect hundreds and thousands of sensors over a very small footprint. And then you can use the satellite as a backhaul. So you can put a VSAT that will be connected to a 5G cell that will mm -hmm. provide IoT, uh, massive IoT on a certain region and then use the satellite as a backhaul. Example, you can see in a project that we did in Brazil not so long ago, with hundreds and thousands of uh, IoT devices in agricultures connected to a cell of 4G. And the backhaul of the cell is a satellite, is a, is a visa. And this is exactly the things that we will start to see. In some places, it will go directly over satellite in 5G NTN. In mm -hmm. other places, it will be most cost effect, more effective to use a cell of a 4G or a 5G and use the visa as a backhaul for that. And this is the kind of things that we are seeing the market starting to move towards that. And mm -hmm. as I said, it's opened the markets to, like you said, a lot of IoT, a lot of devices. It means that there is a room for all kind of 
of techniques. I think one of the major techniques that we will start, technologies that we will start to see coming is edge computing, which is also part of the 5G NTN. Having some of the function moving from the cloud into the edge and having a visa there that can run part of the application on the edge mm -hmm. and use some of the logic on the local before sending it to the cloud will be another major change that we will see. And this is where VSATs can be a great contributor because we know today there are solutions that use VSAT with the uh, mobile edge computing and mm -hmm. solution. Uh, we are using that today for doing encryptions and, and SD1 and other kind of technologies. And I think we will start to see more and more application coming to that environment. Mm -hmm. So even the ability to do edge computing, to run some analytics, some functionalities on the edge, near the visa, close to the IoT, yeah. will be another area that will start to boom and to start to see visa going to that field of, of needs because of the ability of a visa to run more application. Okay, understood. What kind of impact are 5G technologies going to have on satellite infrastructure? I mentioned in the beginning, we can dive a little deeper to that, it's, it's cloud. I'm thinking the all idea first of all of cloud of having virtualization of everything having the ability to run your network management application on a cloud on an azure on a, on a microsoft or a amazon a cloud this will be a, a major change another thing is the data center data center today when we do the acceleration when we do the quality of service is another area that can easily go into the cloud exactly like it's happening in the 5g world and I think this is a major, major change that we are starting to see the whole area of cloud, especially on those areas of data centers and management. Mm -hmm. They are starting to be committees and small working groups and some companies and Gilat is also in that, that are looking also on the basement, go closer to the gateway, on the receive, on the transmit. One function there can be offloading to the cloud and some other will need to remain uh, on, on the gateway itself, but there are going to be also there some work. And I think we are only at the beginning of that in the coming years, we will start to see more and more companies working around these areas. Uh, we in Gilat are also looking into that uh, today. Mm -hmm. um, the other aspect, as I mentioned, is the edge computing, taking the other side of it. So, okay, you're, you're moving into the cloud, moving functions into the cloud, but there is a lot of room to move, to move function closer to the edge, caching, video distribution, analytics, those are all kinds of things that uh, Edge is classic for that, a modem that has a VNF capabilities and can run those kind of application is, is something that the market needs. Uh, look about all the different SD1 solutions that we are starting to see. Uh, as I said, analytics it can be video analytics, it can be data analytics, all of that running on the Edge is it, something mm -hmm. that the market needs. And of course, encryption, especially for government and DFS application, the ability to run all kind of encryption related application and solution on the edge is another area that, that, that the technology of the 5G can impact and can change. Interesting. Okay, so just looking ahead now, how, how do you see the, um, the satellite industry evolving in the, I don't know, say the next five to seven years? And what will Gilat be, uh, where will they, will, will they be positioned in that progress? So five to seven years is a lot of time. Yeah. You know, we can change a lot during this time. I think what we are seeing, and it goes, 5G is the starting point of that, looking on 5G NTN, looking on the 3GP, 3GPP work on 5G, but also on 6G, release 18, release 19. All those areas you are seeing the very, you're seeing a pattern there. They are going, they want to standardize the satellite industry. They want to make some kind of a, of a formal, satellite communication uh, which uses some kind of standardization and i think this is the path that we will see from one hand moving more and more things into the cloud into the private or public cloud from the other end having the interfaces standardized going into MEF, going into a uh, um, on app and other kind of interfaces that are also common in 5g we will start to see more and more in that but i think the major thing that is a big enigma. I don't know if it will be solved or not. I don't know if it will happen or not. But I think the big thing is the access. Will the 3GPP, will the 5G NTN will be able to create a new access for the satellite that everybody can use or not? We will still be, will remain as a proprietary area of the satellite. This is the big question. 
Yeah. And uh, it's hard to predict where it, what will happen with that. But we are seeing that different committees trying to do some work around that. And I think it will have some impact. Sure. Uh, and in Gilat, we are part of that. We are trying to be part of those committees, part of this path, wherever we can contribute to that. And we are trying to evolve on that path. And I said earlier, Sky 4. Sky 4 is exactly sitting on those paths of having standard interfaces, having cloud, having edge capabilities, all of that as part of the forward path that we are seeing for this industry. That was always going to be a tough question because I guess, you know, to be able to accurately answer it, you have to really understand how the industries that satellite serves are going to evolve in the next five to seven years. So apologies for putting you under a bit of pressure there. Gil Elizov, thank you very much. Um, Head of Products, uh, Gilat Satellite Networks. Thank you very much for these uh, these, these interesting insights and um, hope you can make it uh, for the conference. Uh, uh, of course. Yeah, Thank you, Paul. Chat box. All right, fantastic. Always a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Thank you very much, Gil. Bye Thank now. Thank you. Bye.